Are you one of those people struggling to complete some of those new Battlefield 1 weapon assignments? Like me, are you stuck trying to get those 15 tripwire mine kills? Well, look no further. This video is going to help you get that Mosin Nagant rifle that you've been eyeing up since September the 5th. I'll cover off the Nagant rifle in this video as well, but firstly, I want to give you guys some tips of how you can speed up getting those tripwire kills. There's lots of different ways that you can do it, some more effective than others, and I think I found a very interesting way and a very effective way of getting it done. So firstly, the assignment is to unlock the Marksman variant of the Mosin Nagant, which is arguably the variant that you want to be using, as it resembles the sniper rifle that you'd normally run with as a scout. The unlock process is twofold. Get 50 kills with the Gewehr 98 Marksman, and get 15 kills with the high explosive tripwire bombs. Now I'm sure that most players, within a few rounds, they can rack up those 50 kills with the Gewehr fairly easily, and if you equip it at the same time as trying to get the tripwire bomb kills, then, well, you're already accelerating your progress there. But there are many different methods and many different playstyles that you can adopt to get those 15 tripwire kills. Firstly, you could go down the passive route. I wouldn't advise doing that. It's going to take you a long time to get those 15 kills. Place the tripwire bombs on corners or in high activity areas of the map where there's lots of foot traffic, and you might find that once in a while you get a kill with the tripwire bombs. There are several disadvantages to doing it this way. Number one, the damage value of the tripwire bombs. The high explosive variant will do a maximum of 72 damage. That's not enough to kill somebody in one hit unless they have less than 72 health. Then you will kill someone. So if a 100 health soldier runs through your tripwire bomb, they are going to be heavily damaged, but they're still going to survive. Number two, the tripwire bombs are extremely visible. The wire is fairly easy to spot, and the bottle can be picked off from range with a normal weapon, and that neutralizes your threat. And thirdly, so many people don't know how to place these tripwire bombs properly. Whatever direction you're facing when you place that bomb down on the floor, that's the direction that the wire will shoot out from and then attach onto a solid object. Placing it around doors is a good idea, but it's no use if you were looking at the door frame when you planted it, because the wire is going to hit the door frame and then it will just never go off. So the passive route is really not one that you're going to want to take. You can do it, but it will take you rather a long time. The second route, I found, is to bait your enemy in. For this, you not only need to be smart about your placement, but you need to be quick to avoid being taken out yourself. Now I'd recommend playing the smaller game modes for this variant because you can predict with a greater amount of accuracy where enemies are going to run and you can be sure of action all the time because of the smaller map size. Once again, place the bomb in a high traffic, high foot traffic area and work around that area, moving and checking your angles. Bait in an enemy with a couple of pistol shots, that's important, and try to lead them towards your bomb. Now this is a fairly effective method, but it won't always pay off, and sometimes enemies are wise to what you're doing because right now a lot of people are trying to unlock this weapon. If you don't think an enemy's going to come near the bomb, or they surprise you or come from a different angle, then it's worth trying to keep yourself alive and just finishing that player off with your pistol, because you can pick the bomb up and you can relocate if you want to. It is important to pop a few shots into that enemy player with your pistol and bring their health down a little bit because, as I said earlier, these bombs only do 72 max damage, so ensuring that at least 30 damage has been taken from that player will make sure that you get the kill if they get close enough to your bomb. If you happen to get killed by the bomb going off, then don't worry too much. The bomb is a gadget that can take some time to resupply from an ammo crate, and on small modes like TDM and Domination, you're going to be spawning back in pretty fast anyway. I'd recommend the M1911 as a sidearm because it's got a good damage model, plenty of damage per bullet, and it reloads pretty fast, so you can always keep yourself protected. I've seen a few other people recommending that you work with a friend to unlock this rifle by combining the Scout class, which you obviously need to play to get those tripwire kills, with the Assault class, and then use the further explosive power of the AT mines. You play as the Scout and your friend plays as the Assault. You put a bomb down and then your Assault friend puts an AT mine next to it. Once an enemy triggers the tripwire, 
the tripwire triggers the AT mine and you get a way bigger explosion. This bypasses that 72 damage issue that I've mentioned, as the power of the AT mine, triggered by the tripwire bomb, kills the enemy. And this can make for some really funny moments because I did manage to get a kill this way by placing the bomb next to some dynamite that had been left by an enemy that he hadn't exploded. The wire was in the way of a door and I swung the door closed. Bang goes the bomb, that killed me. Bang goes the dynamite and then down comes the ceiling of the house killing an enemy who was unlucky enough to be upstairs shooting out of the window. It was like an only in battlefield moment. But I still don't think that's the most effective method, because if you're baiting people in, there's still a chance that they won't take the bait, they'll flank you and kill you some other way. The most effective method I've found is to play aggressively as the scout. Now people don't expect this, and therefore they get distracted when you pull off some outrageous manoeuvre to get that kill. There's some examples in the background for you now, I got about 12 kills this way. But I found that the moment someone looks like they're going to start a gunfight with you, that's the perfect time for you to be putting down the bomb. If you drop it, move quickly and then whip out your pistol for the gunfight, and if luck is on your side, you'll land some shots and take out the player, and you'll probably die laughing, which makes it all the more fun. Because you're essentially combining the baiting method with some slicker moves, you can guarantee action, which makes the grind towards those 15 kills a hell of a lot more fun, and you're almost forcing the enemy to make a mistake rather than waiting for them to do it. It's a small difference in words, but during gameplay, it makes a big difference. But of course, the reason you're doing all of this is for the prize, the Mosin Nagant Marksman. Now this rifle fits right into the Russian maps that have been added and it's got some good hip fire accuracy as well which I found useful on the two Civil War maps. It holds 5 rounds in an internal magazine but it has a fairly lengthy rechamber animation between shots so using cover is going to be key. Its rate of fire isn't particularly pleasing. The sweet spot range stretches from about 60 to 100 meters or so and that makes it quite an effective weapon for medium range sniping where those 100 damage shots are going to take out enemies in one go. Is it going to dethrone the SMLE however for being perhaps the best rifle now you can choose in Battlefield 1? Uh, no. The SMLE still wins on ammo capacity, rechamber speed, reload efficiency, with two stripper clips being reloaded from empty, and its sweet spot is still more favourable at 40 to 80 metres. Bullets do travel fast from the Mosin, matching the 1903 Springfield, however, at 820 metres a second, so it makes it ideal for getting some quick shots on enemies that are moving. Overall, you have to go through quite a bit of pain to unlock the Mosin Nagant Marksman, unless you get lucky and people keep running into your tripwire bombs all the time, but doing the aggressive route that I did was definitely much more fun than just leaving a tripwire bomb somewhere and hoping somebody runs into it. You can at least have fun whilst unlocking this new rifle. But I wouldn't say it takes the top spot for being the hardest assignment in this new DLC. That still goes to the MG1417 Parabellum low weight variant for me. You had to get two kills on planes using LMGs, which in my head made absolutely no sense, but once I started doing it, I found it to be quite effective. It was still difficult to do, but it got I got there in the end. These assignments are really challenging, which is what I like about Battlefield. I like the game to challenge me and put me out of my comfort zone. And I feel that too much in Battlefield 1 so far has been about making things easier for everybody. And while I think that new players do deserve an easy route into the game so they understand what's going on, there are people that want to play Battlefield all the time and want to be challenged with new experiences. And up until now, that really wasn't the case. But with this new DLC and these new assignments, it, we finally got some good stuff to do. And you do have to grind away at some of these assignments, which I like doing as well. But there you go, my tips and tricks for getting those tripwire kills and a brief review of the Mosin Nagant rifle. Overall, it's a good addition to Battlefield 1, but it can be an absolute bugger to unlock. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.